Hey guys, what's going on? Kel back here yet again with another Warhammer 40,000 uh, YouTube video uh, on behalf of the 40 Kel, uh, 40 Call, sorry, uh, YouTube page. Um, hope everyone's doing well. Thank you very much to everyone who watched the last video we put out um, just a few minutes ago, which was all about the new Overwatch rule. Um, a lot of uh, interesting things come out of that article. Um, and as I've come out, done a bit of editing, I've gone back onto it and there's been yet another um, piece of information dropped on the Warhammer, com Warhammer community page. This time it's a faction focus on the Chaos Space Marines. But before we get into that, big thank you to everyone who's liked and subscribed and commented on the videos in the past week. It's been a massive help, massive confidence boost for me and Carl. Thank you very much. If you're new to the channel, we post Warhammer 40,000 content every single day. And if today is like a day, sometimes it's multiple times a day. So if you stick with us, this is not the way at the end, and if you're impressed by what we do, hit that subscribe button, we will greatly appreciate it. But with that said and done, we're going to go into this video, which I said at the beginning is a faction focus about the Chaos Space Marines. Okay, so yesterday we saw a glimpse of how Space Marines are looking the new edition. So we reckon it's only fair to investigate the Dark Brethren, the Chaos Space Marines next. To help out, the Dark Gods graced us with their herald, Justin Curtis, who divides his time between... Uh, play testing Warhammer 40,000 and making the galaxy burn. So without further ado, let's learn more about the Heretic Astartes. Now we have a big Chaos Force, uh, Chaos Force led by Abaddon the Despoiler, um, some Terminators, some newer models going up against um, the Sons of Gilliman, uh, the Ultramarines there, uh, some great new models. I, lo I love the, the new Abaddon model and the Lord Discordant and some of the other ones. Kraken. So who are they? The Chaos Space Marines were once loyal superhuman warriors of the Emperor, but turned their backs on the Master of Mankind uh, when his foremost son and Primarch, the War Master, Horus, was corrupted by the Chaos Gods. Now, as champions of the Dark Gods, infused with the infernal power of the Warp, they seek only to destroy the very Empire they once fought to build more than 10,000 years ago. And now we have Horus. Uh, no, sorry, Horus. Uh, Abaddon, with the talent of Horus um, and these Chaos Space Marines, some beautiful artwork there. Once again, fighting fighting the Ultramarines and the Sons of Gilman. Great bit of artwork. I love the art that comes from Games Workshop. Fantastic. So how do they play in the new edition? It's time we heard from Justin Curtis, uh, who will be stepping in to bring you up to speed with how the Chaos Space Marines can make the most of the rules changes in the new edition. First up, we can confirm that he isn't actually a herald of the Dark Gods. <laughs> well, not as far as we're aware anyway. But he is really good at killing stuff with his rightly failed armies of Heretic Astartes and Chaos Demons. And Justin says, good news Heretics. The new edition is on its way and it's bringing the quality uh, of life upgrades for some of our finest legions, as well as some notable enhancements for many of our lesser used units. And what we got here? We got the Astromatellum going up against some just Chaos Space Marines, I think. Just normal Marines. Um, maybe some Cultists on the side. That's a great shot, that. I love the, the smoky effect at the bottom. Okay, and let's see what Justin's got to say. So, Psychic Awakening, uh, Faith and Fury brought us plenty of amazing new stratagems, but we've still found ourselves failing, uh, obligated to bring along an endless sea of Chaos Cultists, a tide of traitors, you could say, to pay for them. Uh, while that may feel uh, appropriate for the Alpha Legion or Word Bearers, it's definitely less so for the Night Lords uh, or Empress Children. This also meant you were putting yourself at a disadvantage by not choosing to mix and match your Chaos Army. After all, if you're bringing three Battalion Detachments to the party, why not bring three different Legions and gain additional options? Very true. An updated Battleforge rules uh, in the new edition are, spe are spectacular news. Uh, for the Command Point Thirsty Chaos Lord, committed to a single Legion. You'll now find yourself with plenty of points to spend on all those powerful stratagems uh, and will, in fact, be rewarded for not choosing to spread out into additional detachments, uh, more Demon Forge for everyone. And we have here, for one CP, the Demon Forge uh, stratagem. So use this stratagem in your shooting uh, or fighting phase, when a Chaos Space Marine uh, Demon Vehicle is chosen to attack, you can re-roll all failed hit and wound rolls for that model until the end of the phase. And this is horrible when you go up against Chaos Knights, which I will be doing very shortly once Call has finished them. 
because re-rolling re all the failed hits and wounds with some of the models that he has, we can put out dozens of shots at a terrific amount of damage is awful. And although I want to do a battle apart against Call, I ain't looking forward to it because I've got a feeling that I'm going to get whipped. <laughs> so many of our units uh, will see uh, immediate upgrades in the new edition as well. In particular, things are looking up for demon engines. Even without Demon Forge, the updated blast weapons rule will breathe new life into many uh, of their weapons options by making them far more reliable when targeting larger units. We don't even have to wait for a new codex as the rules kick in from day one. Beyond that, some demon engines made the choice between melee and ranged weaponry a difficult one. Your Forge Fiend uh, may have a set of demon jaws, but who wants to waste all those nice guns by getting stuck in combat. Uh, and your Defiler uh, may be bristling with claws and scourges to lay waste to all who come near, but we're still risking never getting to fire uh, the half dozen terrifying guns on a demonic war engine if you spend all game uh, slaying up claws. The newest addition will give your vehicles a chance to keep firing away even while smashing Imperials to bits with their metallic hands and or teeth. This will make the shooting slash assault phase, uh, shooting slash assault facility of most demon engines feel like an asset rather than a missed opportunity. And then we've got some, some demon forge, some great looking models again. Um, going up against these um, a couple of times, it did really well in one game, they did absolutely nothing. And then the next time I played them, the, the guy came for, for payback and I got whipped. <laughs> so, you're also going to be hearing uh, a lot about updated terrain rules, uh, but it's honestly better to say overhauled rather than updated. I'm sure the Aperium and Xenos armies will have their own reasons to love the new terrain rules, but let's focus on what's best for Chaos Space Marines players who traditionally prefer to do their killing at the end of a chain axe. It will be much, much harder for an enemy player to hide from your wrath in the new edition. No longer can your opponent opponents units cower behind walls they think they can't clamber over or try to fill the floor uh, of a ruined building so you can't climb up the new terrain rules are much friendlier to aggressive assaults which in turn allows you to be very unfriendly to your opponent's armies and we've got some we're coming to come with some key units for this for the chaos uh, so thanks justin so now that we know what the chaos press marines can look forward to in the new edition which units in their roster are potential game changers? Let's look at some of our favourites. And of course, we start with Corn Berserkers. Um, Carl has some Corn Berserkers. I have gone up against them um, quite a few times. Um, I did really well before when he put them in a Rhino. Shot the Rhino, blew the Rhino up, killed about half a dozen Corn Berserkers, uh, and then managed to wipe the rest out with um, Onslaught Gatling Cans and all sorts. But they're not nice in close combat. If you, if you let these guys get too close, they will chop you to bits. So with the ability to fight twice, yep, you read it, fight twice in each fight phase by a uh, violent ritual of their blood for the blood god ability, Corn Berserkers are rightly feared as one of the deadliest melee units in the 41st millennium. And with all the additional command points flying around, you can even channel the fury of Corn to fight with them a third time. Oh, oh dear. Last year saw them gain uh, addition ability Hateful Assault, granting them a bonus attack in the first round of combat, making them even better or angrier. And uh, now with the freedom to sweep, even the most heavily defended positions, uh, clear with their devastating assaults, Corn Berserkers are set to dominate the fight phase like never before. So what have they got now? For 3 CP, ooh, it's expensive. Fury of Corn. Use this stratagem at the end of the fight phase. Select a heretic Astartes, heretic Astartes corn infantry or bike unit, and that unit can immediately fight again. I mean, it's expensive, three CP, but the amount of the amount of damage those guys can put out, if if it's a full squad, it's worth it. It's definitely better than the um, orbital bombardment strategy, which costs three CP. Uh, next, we've got a Defiler. Um, in a very green paint scheme. I don't think I've ever seen one paint like that before. Ooh, that's green. <laughs> it's big, it's tough, uh, and Defiler can dish out a world of pain, especially when juiced up by the Demon Force stratagem. If you stick with the Defiler Claws as your melee weapon option, you can kit it out with twin heavy flamers, 
for some improvised barbecue, even during combat. While you're, uh, while you're at it, give a combi flamer to make sure your victims go the medium rare uh, to, to medium rare to well done. So the defy the claws are range melee, type melee, strength is times two, AP minus three, and it's a flat D6 damage each. Um, sorry, flat D6. It's a D6 damage each, not flat D6. Um, but yeah, defy the claws. I it, when you when you're facing a chaos space marine army, okay. And it has, it'll have Berserkers in, it'll have a Defiler in, it'll have a Rhino in, it'll have uh, Lord Discordance in, it'll have all sorts. It's very difficult to pick one thing and think, I'm going to kill that first. Because anything in a Chaos Space Marine Army, doesn't matter what it is, can put out a lot of, uh, a lot of punishment. And here we have the Lord Discordant on Hellstalker. This is, this is a cool looking model. Um, Cole's got one of these, painted up beautifully. He's brought it a few times, but I'll mention it, but you'll never forget when you fail that three inch charge. Awful, mate. Awful. Should be ashamed. <laughs> this one model army is a devastating all-round uh, addition to any heretic Astartes force. For starters, it has the vehicle uh, and daemon engine keywords, meaning that it benefits from similar advantages as a defiler, such as being able to use its bell flamer at point-blank range. However, it can also hamper those uh, same newfound abilities uh, for enemy vehicles with his aura of discord. Uh, they're called the Traitor Legion for a reason, so Wi-Fi fair. True, I've got the Aura of Discord. Subtract one from hit rolls for attacks made by vehicle units while they are within six inches of any enemy models with this ability. In addition, add one of the hit rolls for attacks made by uh, Legion or Demon Engine units while they're within six inches of any friendly Legion uh, models with this ability. So it's a it's a takeaway and a buff. They're, they're a really cool model. They do... They do a ton of damage. Whenever you see a Chaos Space Marine uh, battle report, it'll be very rare that you don't see um, a Lord Discordant in there. Okay, and we've got... Thanks again for the input, Justin. Uh, which of the Dark Gods do you serve? And uh, what new units are you be adding your Traitor Legions in preparation for the new edition? Let us know on Warhammer 40,000 Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, using the hashtag uh, new40k. So what do we think, guys? What do we think about that little um, taster into the the realm of chaos? Um, do you guys have a chaos army? Um, in and if you do, tell us what it is. Um, do you run multiple uh, multiple factions so you can get multiple uh, stratagems? So you can have more versatility. Do you just run run one? Let us know. Love to hear some more comments um, from you guys. And me and Carl will um, respond, comment, and like back anything that we hear because we love to hear you from you. Um, but that's going to be it. Um, if you're still here at the end, guys, thank you very much. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure it turns nice and blue. And if you're new to the channel, and this is the first video that you've been watching, if you liked it, um, then subscribe. Why not? We put out Warhammer 40,000 content every single day. Uh, not just uh, news, but we do paint and tutorials. And when lockdown's over uh, and we can go visit and stuff like that, then it will be 40k battle reports. Hopefully in time for 9th edition. Um, that's going to be it, guys. Uh, like I said before, leave some comments below and me and Carl will happily rate them. Um, this is Kel signing off 40 Call saying stay safe, look after each other. Until next time, guys, we'll see you later.